Are you guys in retail pharmacy and you wanna jump into informatics? Today, I got the one and only Brian Fung, informatics pharmacist extraordinaire. We need some epic music to back that part. <laughs> Three, two, one. What up, guys? So today I have my boy, Brian Fung. We've been actually just um, hanging out for the last, how many days now? Uh, a couple of days now, right? Thurs I got here on Thursday. He was actually hanging out with my girlfriend before that. Yeah, I was just, it's it? it just a one-on-one -on -one thing with me and his All right, girlfriend. Man. All right, man, we got to keep that, <laughs> keep that safe. All right. <laughs> but me and Brian actually had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time these last three days. And for y'all that don't know, we actually met through my YouTube channel. And today I just wanted just to have a, um, just kind of like a podcast style sort of thing with Brian and just talk to him about his vacation, pharmacy, whatever, just shoot the shit. And, um, yeah. So Brian, do you remember how we first met? Uh, yeah, man. Didn't we talk about this in another YouTube I think video? we did talk <laughs> about it. But basically, if you guys don't know, we actually met through my YouTube channel and, through his girlfriend, <laughs> yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah. So, what was it like? You guys went to like some event together. I think she, some YouTube promotion. No, it was, was actually it? a uh, Asian American like professional type of thing. Really? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I actually normally don't go. She got really lucky actually because I normally don't go to those things. But that one day, like my friend was just like, "Hey, just shoot on over. Like we'll just we'll just like chill and stuff." And so that's how I met Angela and. Thank God, because I got to meet you, man. Yo, man, that was pretty sweet. And it was like, my girlfriend was your your first, what, uh, celebrity was, spotting or something like that, right? Yeah, so <laughs> I I mean, we're not that famous or anything. I'm not that famous. No, this guy's anything. famous. This nah, guy's got not the big D. I don't <laughs> got the big D. I have the small D, man. No, 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 no. Right no. Far, in the pharmacy YouTube channel, come on now. <laughs> Kevin is probably the number one most famous pharmacist on youtube i don't know we got some makeup artists who have like hundreds of like thousands of following too but i guess like i don't know i i'm pro i'm probably definitely in the top five for sure top, top five. one top one we know that top it's one, the, top one. <laughs> it's, it's the number one spot that's, not, that's cool though yeah 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 but um yeah so tell me about so far like tell me about your trip to california and stuff like that uh it's it's been pretty chill you know it's really cool to come out here uh you know we're looking at different places, uh, potential places to live and potential mm -hmm. places to work. Yeah. A lot of traffic. Yeah. Uh, so far, I tripped a lot of food. Yeah. I had like all you can eat a couple times. Dude. Good food. Dude, this kid, <laughs> freaking all you can eat sushi, all you can eat. Uh, Wait, we didn't go all you can eat barbecue. Yeah, it we felt didn't... like it though. Oh my God. <laughs> it definitely man. felt like it. Yeah. So we got to do the do that. We also went to Line Hotel. Oh yeah. And on the oh, way yeah. to Line oh, Hotel, yeah. <laughs> um the like you got to see how girls sort of hit on me and how Yo, i'm kind of scared of girls and shit it's pretty crazy man i don't yeah. i don't know why so when i watch kevin on youtube i feel as though he gives off this this uh personality that you know he's shy <laughs> he doesn't approach girls he's a good guy but then i saw firsthand these girls that like, come up to kevin and like <laughs> they approach this guy man i was like Damn. dude this girl she literally came from like a mile away she tripped and Bell and she was like hey what are you doing tonight show me a good time and i was like oh my god yeah was, man but i get too nice of a guy man he i was, get he like nice guy. He, he turned her down he turned her down and then we got a uh, shout out to what's her name frangelica francesca francesca from uci, UCI. who just graduated Brian got really lucky and he got recognized, man. First time. First yeah, time. first time. So that was a really, I thought that was a really cool experience to be there with you, you getting actually recognized. And I don't know. How did you feel like getting recognized? Uh, I don't know. It it felt a little awkward at first. Yeah. Right? It, it's, it was, uh, it was cool though. It was cool. Like she just walked by and she's yeah. like, hey, are you no, Kevin and Brian? Twice. That's twice. right. She walked by twice. Twice. I was a little jealous though, man. She said Kevin first. She was like, well, "Are you guys Kevin and Brian?" I was like, "Ah, are, are we? Oh, are we man. a couple?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, it was really cool. Like honestly, I was actually pretty attracted to her, and I was actually trying Dang. to work up the courage Public to talk to her. Public service announcement: He's calling you out, yo, Fr Francesca. Like, yo, <laughs> slide in my DMs. Dang. Um, no, but seriously, I thought she was pretty attractive, and I actually just wanted to 
approach her but i was just too scared man like in the club maybe that's why i was awkward too because like in cl in normal settings like i'm cool like i can talk to people right but recently in club settings like i just freeze up man i just freezed up and pussied out and honestly like i was like shit i should have grabbed her number oh shit i should have grabbed her instagram because i love interacting with my fans and stuff especially if they're good looking <laughs> you know i actually didn't talk too much so actually when she came up to us uh, she actually gravitated toward Kevin and was talking to <laughs> Kevin the whole time. She just she didn't really say anything to me. So what were you guys talking about anyway? Um, so, well, did you see her her like um I think it was her like gay best friend or something like pushed her like totally really? yeah. <laughs> Wait, I, I, I missed that. She, Yo, is this the first time when she? Yeah, she this is the first time. He's like, or uh, no, second time. She oh he, second like, time. He like nudged her over to me. <laughs> so she's I don't know. I I don't want to make her sound like a fangirl or anything like that. But it was just, I was just really nervous too. Like, I, I don't know. I think for me, like, I have a problem where I just feel like I don't, I'm not like desired or I'm not like, mm, sort of attracted or girls aren't attracted to me. You know, I just feel like mm. that. But I know that it's all up in my head. But yeah, sorry, uh, Francesca or Frangelica <laughs> or I heard Frangelica. <laughs> he heard Francesca. I think it's Francesca. Man, but shit. we, but we know. You're from UCI. Yeah. You know, shout out to that school. Yeah. Shout out to you. University of Chinese Immigrants. <laughs> yeah, go. that's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a cool night, man. That was a really fun night. It was it was really well, sort of. Like the music was kinda lame, but I think what really was really cool was um just me and Brian, like we've just been hanging out a lot, just one on one. Because Angela has been doing her own thing. She's been doing salsa and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So you know, it's just a cool experience to really um, just hang out with someone that you never met in real life. And you guys just like us just like instantly connecting, you know, like, honestly, I talked to Brian, like I've known him for as a friend for a long time, you know, and How long has I've it been. Is it is it a year already or no? Less than uh, a year. Less than a year. Shoot, you're right. It's or is it a year? Probably like at least. Um, Actually, it might have been a year because I didn't really start a chant a video until yeah. August of last year. And. I met you before that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, because I started uh, promoting your channel back before you were doing pharmacy and stuff. Um, Dang, that's or crazy. pharmacy, yeah, pharmacy related content. But yeah, let me ask you this. What made you want to start a pharmacy YouTube channel? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the business opportunity. You know, you think about like things that people want. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, in our conversations, we talked about how like, there is not a lot of pharmacy videos out there. Yeah. So I was like, hmm, I got to, you know, get in some of this mix. It's a good business <laughs> opportunity, you know, supply yeah. demand. Yeah. I think it was really cool, too, because I remember I was, yeah, I, I remember this conversation. We were talking about how I just feel like a lot of pharmacists were underrepresented mm -hmm. in, um, in the YouTube social media world. And you brought to my attention uh, Z Dog MD. Oh yeah, man. He's hella <laughs> entertaining, man. I was like, fuck, I haven't been like on top of my game, and um, you know, like that's sort of the personality I want to give off for pharmacy because not all of us are like geeky nerds. Like old, like when I hear pharmacists, like traditional pharmacists, I think about an old, not this guy, <laughs> not this guy with his two like pierced ears they're or fake, anything like they're that. They're fake, they're fake. Yeah, they're, they're just clip-ons. Yeah, they're clip-ons. Um, I just, I just think about like an old, like old guy in a white coat just mm -hmm. counting pills all day. I but beard. honestly, that's not what we do and that's not like us. You know, we're young Asians. We like to go out. We like, well, I try to hit on girls, but I just, I'm just too scared sometimes, man. Uh, he doesn't need to do that because they come up to him. I know, man. That was really cool. And we got to meet. Um, so what kind of people did you meet out here? Let me ask you that. Uh, you know, it's it's crazy. So there was a other reason so that I came out here for. So, you know, one of the things Wait, just was just go it, back to play. Was, it, was well, it just for me? <laughs> <laughs> That's Damn. right. Number one reason was to actually come out to Damn. Kevin. <laughs> Big shout out to Kevin, actually, because he hosted me and my girlfriend for five, five days, six days. Wednesdays. Yeah, but it's no big deal, man. He, the real thing that Brian did for me, he treated me out to a Korean barbecue, man. Come hold on, son. That hurt, man. That hurt yeah. the paycheck. That's right. <laughs> no, that was that was cool. The that's actually little for the amount of uh, things that Kevin's done for us. You know, hosting us, taking us out, took me on this easy hike. Recommended to everyone. <laughs> this guy's like, 
Because I, I was like, yo, let, let me go find a hike that I can see LA. And yeah. he's like, all right, you know, I got this perfect, easy hike for you. He even asked my girlfriend who was wearing sandals, you know, he was like, yo, easy hike. She you had heels and sandals. <laughs> But easy tap. <laughs> oh shit she didn't go and then like i went on the hike yeah and we're like at the bottom of the hike the trailhead and it was like yo we're going up there i was like oh no <laughs> i was like are we gonna get up there dude we didn't even make we were like walking toward like the base of the the, the hike trail and i hear i hear brian <sighs> Fuck! So defeated yeah, I, already, my, man. My endurance is bad. Yeah, my endurance is bad. Well, dude, so. I started cramping up. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> like in the beginning, I like took the first, I think the first five steps, my inner thigh started cramping. I was like, "Fuck! I should have done that squat day." And yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was really cool. We got to do a hike. Um, but we also like. I also introduced you to Matt as well, and oh yeah, he introduced me to cool people too, man. Uh, like uh, oh John, John, John yeah, oh, that's pretty cool. We can give him a shout out. Damn, <laughs> yeah. he does. He doesn't use. He does. Okay, so just to give you a little background, uh, we met this guy who has his farm D and his PhD, yep. double I, D son. I think he's also board certified in. Oh, is geriatric. he? Yeah, he's got something. He's got a couple letters after his uh his name. Dang. He's like a fellow of all these different organizations. He's pretty accomplished. Yeah, and we went to this like uh speakeasy. Mm-hmm. And uh man, being around those two, I was like, damn, I got a small D. Oh man, but you got the YouTube. So it's no, like no 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 no, no, we, <laughs> no, no Matt was there too. Oh. Matt was there too. But but in pharmacy. In pharmacy. <laughs> Matt was there too. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, I got a small D. No, no, no. It was yeah. it, it was it was pretty chill though. We met some really cool people out here yeah. uh last five days. Um I wish I'd introduce you to some more people. Oh, so you sure. maybe you'll meet like Benson and Jessica later. Yeah. But like um what day was it on thursday mm -hmm. thursday was the tech day friday i went out to not friday saturday Saturday I went out to a barbecue and i met like all these physicians that just graduated what so they're yeah. all in la they're all, all working in different hospitals like mm. everyone's pretty chill yeah um i got actually you being here actually really helped me out, out a lot because it made me remind myself like hey you know what i should really reconnect with a lot of um like do more collabs and stuff with people or just like get really involved with the pharmacy world. Um, like, cause I've honestly like outside of precepting for USC and stuff, I don't really talk to a lot of fellow peers other than my class and stuff. And actually that's something that you like brought upon me that I was like, Oh shit, I need to, it feels good to just reconnect with like pharmacists again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or even like meeting people like outside. It, it's cool, man. Like it's, I think it's really rewarding for me. Like other than directly helping people, I think it's really cool to also bring people together. Like, um, you didn't, you, you, you watched Matt's video. You knew Matt. He actually like got footage of Matt too. Yeah, like, man. Speaking, man. Celebrity spotting. Yeah. I'll post that on my channel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shameless plug. I'll yeah. put a call out for you. But um, I thought it was really cool to just like see that I can bring people that are in my circle of friends and connect them to others. And for me, that's really rewarding because it's almost like it's adding value to your friends in a really easy way. I think sometimes we underestimate like how much value that can bring. Yeah. You know, you know, if I were to highlight one major thing or like one theme of this trip for me, it is uh, connecting with people or relationships mm -mm. like i have never i i came into this uh trip like five six day trip expecting to be all business like mm -hmm. i thought i was gonna do some work i was doing this email. fool he ha <laughs> dude i have never met anyone who is so dedicated dedicated to, to their to their schedule man oh you're like oh <laughs> 9 a.m breakfast of champions and like that dang type personality yo but yo <laughs> how many times do you do breakfast of champions man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no we, we never did that <laughs> No, but but it's crazy though, right? Yeah. Like I, I thought I was gonna do this like crazy schedule and all this kind of stuff, but yeah. people, um, it's amazing. I've met more people here in the five or six days uh of being here than I have in an entire year of Minnesota. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is like the people here are chill, they're cool, mm -hmm. they're down to earth, and everyone's just relaxed, everyone's like opening. Uh they're like just chill people and And a lot of them are just like successful too. You know, yeah. and they have like all that going for them. Like it's, 
it's honestly really hard to find sometimes people that are successful and have that really cool personality too. Look at this guy right here. This is like... Again, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, but yeah, like I guess it was. Uh, it's been really cool. Did you notice anything? Like, did you learn anything new about me that, like, other than, like, on this trip or anything like that? Just living with me for the last five days. Uh, I think there's maybe one thing. Yeah. Uh. Are you straight? Am I straight? <laughs> Am I straight? I don't know. Shit. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely. I'm. Trust there, me. There's a lot of bromance. I'm going definitely. On. There's a lot I'm of bromance straight. Going on, dude. Palabra for. <laughs> my my girlfriend was a little jealous. Yeah, <laughs> I got. Yo, my roommate, man. Oh, his roommate. We don't know about that roommate. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. So we were actually um just um, right when my roommate comes in like your girlfriend automatically recognizes jason from my vlogs yeah. and stuff well, i actually recognize them too i don't yeah i, don't know I saw going. in a couple couple videos i think of yours i actually saw the video that you it was i think you posted or matt i can't remember mm. but about uh matt's birthday so i saw him oh you guys karaoke, yeah right? we did go karaoke together yeah so uh jason is a uh, i don't know he's a crazy personality too man does he ever show up on like some of your videos Sometimes, that, like, vlogs and stuff. Oh, vlogs. I never not, like, set him down, like, to do, like, any of this sort of stuff. Why not? Because, like, you know what was interesting to me? Yeah. I didn't realize that Jason was in, like, technically he's in the pharmaceutical industry. He's, in yeah. yeah. He's he, in finance, but he's... Yeah, he works for a very good uh, drug company that promotes Rattata. Rattata? <laughs> Rattata, the Pokemon. Not, not, <laughs> <laughs> not Rattata. Next but, level is Raticate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, but let's let's shift gears for a second. Um. I think like one last night, actually, as we were walking home, I was actually just telling Brian, like as a retail pharmacist, sometimes when I go to these like cool, like these USC events or anything like that, or when I'm in the presence of people that did a residency, sometimes I just feel like, um, I don't know. I just feel like I get the, I get not treated, but this aura of not feeling good enough or feeling less than them. You know, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that yeah. I think that you know what was interesting. Where was it? Um, what made me actually think about it now that we're talking about it again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is I was involved in some group that talked about leadership in pharmacy, especially yeah. in pharmacy informatics. Yeah, and most of the the folks on there did not do residency. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're all talking about leadership in mm -hmm. pharmacy. I was like one of the few that had residency, and. Yeah. What was difficult is like I'm writing this article. So we're trying to publish this paper about leadership and I'm writing this article. I'm trying to say, like, should I recommend, uh, you know, candidates who want to pursue leadership positions in pharmacy to do residency? Because mm -hmm. I, I got a lot of leadership type training during residency. But what does that say about the individuals that didn't do residency? Like pharmacy is not just a profession about hospitals or residencies and things like that. Yeah. But. When I was so, I just went to learn more about it. I did some research. I went on blogs, different things. Yeah. And what was very disturbing and kind of um, unfortunate to hear was like a lot of the hospital pharmacists or pharmacists with residency experience trashing or looking down, like what you're kind of saying, mm. on pharmacists who had retail experience. Yeah. And I, I think that's something I really um, that's really refreshing because you're so you're so like. For you, you're very successful in the pharmacy world. Mm. I mean, you mm -hmm. did your mm -hmm. PG one one. Oh man, that big big D over there, that big farm D over there. Um, I mean, you did your board certified. You did like two years of residency. Like you're very accomplished. And to hear that and see your perspective on, on sort of like the benefits of retail. Like I was, uh, I I think that's really refreshing to hear. And you brought up a lot of good points. Like, I think as I, as we were talking, I was just thinking about, like, in retail, like, we launch a lot of different clinical programs. And we have to lead our technicians, our other pharmacists, other people, right? And I really think that's that's what um, one of the strong benefits of retail pharmacy. Like, for me, I'm always, I'm a people person. I love talking to people all the time. And um, it's constantly trying to get people to believe in your programs or believe like 
getting pe everyone on board it's not simply just telling people what to do but mm -hmm. actually showing or like making people feel like this is a benefit for everyone you know it's like inception man inception yeah you're planning the idea and someone else is yeah like, yeah inspiring. i mean that's what truly yeah is, right like you don't dictate you you, you can't lead, you inspire you motivate others yeah because i <laughs> how how would you feel hey Bri Bri let's say brian the technician hey brian do this or you're fired no man that's, how's, yeah, how's that that's bad you news feel? that's bad news how's but people do that feel? too yeah and that's one way you can try to lead you can try to do the mao zedong like fucking the dictator rule the iron fist type of thing and rule with fear but honestly what kind of environment does that create you yeah, know that's... it's not a comfortable environment and i think one of the benefits is having like in my pharmacy like everybody sort of has their own voice and stuff you know yeah and to even like piggyback on like what you were saying too yeah. um i was talking to actually right before i came on this trip to uh give her a shout out too <laughs> she's like a her name's min min go yeah uh, she's a pharmacist out in texas uh -huh. and um i was talking to her about you know uh she works at cvs well yeah cvs mm -hmm. used to be target but uh she's working there and i was like you know just talking to her about other types of positions mm -hmm. and how some of my colleagues transitioned to the hospital yeah and i was like you know a hospital pharmacist and you know this is kind of biased this is just my observation but mm -hmm. in my opinion a lot of the hospital pharmacists are not as savvy in terms of like managerial skills or leadership skills, like mm -hmm. very task oriented. You're good at accomplishing things. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to her because um, about it, a lot of my colleagues, uh, probably uh, kind of a mix, like colleagues that are in retail that have transitioned into um, hospital pharmacies, mm -hmm. they're, they seem to stand out in terms of like they know what to do, more organized. Mm. Uh, more able to accomplish things and yeah. i really respect that because uh one of my really close colleagues right now he is like i would like him to be my manager i would think he is really good at leading mm. because he's able to facilitate he's calm he's he's level-headed yeah he maybe it's because of that customer thing like sometimes you get some bad customers like he's, yeah. he, he's like really good at that yeah but we don't get that as hospital pharmacists yeah and, and again this is just my observations i'm probably get like uh a lot of hospital farms is hating me for saying that <laughs> but you know they, it, it, there's different levels but in just my experience uh the retail pharmacists or community pharmacists that come in they bring an extraordinary amount of management and leadership skills yeah and i think there's a lot to say about that. and do you think it's like um do you think it's also the culture of hospital pharmacy that brings in those type of people as well like um meaning like not to say that uh, maybe people that pursue residency, like who are really, really, like a lot more people who are in residency, maybe don't want to deal with patients and stuff. Or not patients, but deal with like the retail setting, like sort of patients, you know? Hmm. Do you think it might be the culture of that? It could be. Um, and again, this is my bias again, and just my experience. Yeah. Is like, I think a lot of the, the pharmacists that go into hospitals, um, if you did a first year residency, you come and get a staff position and those staff positions, you just work in a central pharmacy. You don't mm. really see patients. Yeah. Granted, that's again, not speaking for the majority because sometimes yeah. you might see them, but usually you sit in a centralized pharmacy Yeah. and you don't have patient care or anything like that. Yeah. I think the word I'm looking for is appeal. 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 Yeah. Like it appeals to people that are like, I guess more, I don't want to say introverted, Maybe that's not a good word, hmm. but you know, like that, that hmm. appeal of like hospital pharmacy, you know? Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> uh, you can probably put me in that bucket because <laughs> like, and, and it was, it's almost kind of bad to say, cause yeah. like I, I am not very people oriented. I'm not very extrovert. I'm introverted. So really? I want to, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty Yo, when well, you're at Lion Hotel, no, you're no, no, like, no, no, yo, no. yo, Kevin. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to anyone for no, you. No, I didn't say that. He's putting words in my mouth. Um, but no, no, I'm I'm actually really introverted. Mm -hmm. uh, I forced myself to kind of like put myself out there. Mm -hmm. But I originally wanted to do critical care mm -hmm. pharmacy because all the patients are sedated. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't interact with them. So, so I know that sounds bad to say, but like, oh, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this really got him going. But like, look, let's put it this way. Oh, 
shit. Okay, it's yeah. like a mutually <laughs> beneficial relationship, right? So yeah. I'm able to use my knowledge to take care of like the sick patient. Yeah. Um. And let me actually let me spin it in a different way. <laughs> so like because I'm not extroverted, mm -hmm. um, it's hard for me to sometimes work with patients, mm. and I think that's the skill that I've just. I'm just not really good. And, you know, some of the more retail pharmacists, you guys have mm -hmm. that natural ability to do so. And so when you are in the hospital pharmacy mm -hmm. or work in the hospital, sometimes you do interact with patients like med rec, mm -hmm. um, things like that. But because I don't have that skill innately, um, I like my patients. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think that's like, that's one thing I've been noticing about you too like um your career everything like that you have really i'm pro I'm probably sure your analytical skills are through the roof you do you were like you're like oh yeah youtube analytics you know, <laughs> you know like when we were talking about youtube but that's probably why like what drew you into informatics as well right yeah there um informatics that's definitely one of them mm -hmm. um but a lot of it is also because i should want to do a video on this is like what what is a good fit for someone who wants to get into informatics? And I was actually mm. talking to my friend Tuan, who's another pharmacist in mm -hmm. uh, Texas. And it's like informatics is, yes, it's, sometimes it might be a little boring. Yeah. But it's for anyone that wants to create. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're not confined by anything. It's like you have this goal you're trying to reach. Yeah. And then you design things to get there. It's like it allows me to use create creativity. Yeah, you know, and then I was originally like an engineering background. So I love that mm. stuff. We're talking. Well, we're also talking like on this morning when we were coming back from 85 degrees. Like, how does a retail pharmacist actually like like someone like me jump into someone like informatics? I know we've talked about it. We shot a video on it before and you've like had several videos on it. Mm -hmm. But like, I think uh, what you said really resonated with me, like the project thing. Yeah, I. You know, I didn't even think about that until you brought it up because you, you asked, well, I forgot what question you asked me. It was like something about like, what do I put on my resume or what, oh, what do they look for? Right. Something yeah. Like that. Because when I, when I think of a resume, I look at it more than just a bragging sheet. Cause honestly, does anybody care that you're an Asian club, like in uh, high school? No, mm -hmm. no one gives mm -hmm. a fuck about that, but it's a marketing doc document. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know anything about that target niche or target like the eyes i don't know anything about that market the people that actually the gatekeepers so that's why i asked you that question yeah i think that's what really triggered uh my mind because i never thought about it in terms of like a resume perspective mm. and so i think my answer was about like what you were saying projects right yeah like um i worked in retail for like three months what in walgreens what yeah. dude exclusive no. <laughs> this is the exclusive sure, i don't think i've ever announced that huh no nah, yeah. man but not as a pharmacist as an intern as an intern okay so in that three months what i noticed is mm -hmm. like um there were so many projects like there's so many uh initiatives uh that my pharmacist or pharmacist manager tried to initiate mm -hmm. and i was like it's crazy. I don't know how they manage like this crazy pharmacy, take care of patients, do what they do, and you know, track for drug interactions, and then also do all these types of initiatives. And granted, this is before all this like I think star be, ratings star, and all, yeah, yeah, all that. It was even before we started doing flu shots. Mm. So this is like, um, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is like the projects back then aren't even as much as the projects now. Yeah. Um, for sure. So I can definitely speak on that. For you, I imagine like there's different projects that you do, um, any type of project at all, because for informatics, the skill set that we look for, and especially that I look for, is someone that is able to, <clears throat> in their mind, visualize, okay, I need uh, part A, part B, part C to get part D, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, so you, you have an end goal. Mm -hmm. uh, like, let's say you're trying to achieve a night. I don't know what's the typical metrics, but like 90 flu shots by this month. Is that very low? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So whatever metric it is, right? Yeah, guys, yeah, but, yeah. But, but you guys come up with ideas, which yeah. it's, my mind just triggers informatics because it's like brainstorming. You guys mm. think of something, you create an initiative or a project, and then you implement it. But that implementing all those logistics is stuff that we do in informatics. Mm -hmm. um, so that is one biggest takeaway i can say for you know especially in retail folks maybe you don't have informatics experience mm -hmm. but any type of project at all yeah um, is really good to put on a resume 
Yeah, I, I like one thing I'm really taking away as you're talking right now is like I really like the way you look at um certain what people might perceive as an obstacle. Like they might take an excuse or like a uh, reasoning. Why why don't you pursue a hospital job if you really want it? Well, I'm in retail, right? But you, I like how you take this sort of obstacle or whatever you want to call it and actually form it into a positive toward th- uh sort of thing. And really, you're, one thing I really like about it is that you're able to extract all the positive things mm. about like retail or about like a certain uh, situation that you have and actually make it a good thing. Well, I, I have to say the positivity was not always there. Mm-hmm. I was one of those like cynical pharmacists before too. <laughs> but did you create that cynical <laughs> pharmacist blog? Man? That might be me. No, no. It's- yeah but you know to be honest uh you know as we go through life you know we have these experiences that we take away and that's what we learn from and that's how we grow these positive experiences that i speak of come directly from my interactions with retail pharmacists Mm. that um, either are still in retail or have transitioned into hospital Mm. like sometimes i really not sometimes i actually do a lot i wish i had more retail experience Mm. Um, i'll give you an example in my first year of residency, we had this tech. Uh, she just got hired. We were doing med rec. We were having pharmacy. And I don't know if it's out here as much, but mm-hmm. um, med rec down in the southeast was like mm-hmm. this new thing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, what not is by that, pharmacists. What, but, let me ask you this. What exactly is med rec for the people that don't know? Oh, I, that's, that's medication. Medication reconciliation. I think yeah. different people uh, term it different things. But in a nutshell, it's basically, you know, when a patient is transferring uh, different acuity levels, maybe like outpatient to inpatient, to okay. inpatient yeah. to outpatient, or even transferring different departments mm-hmm. within the hospital. Uh, you take like a med history uh, of what they're taking, and then you reconciliate it uh, to what is appropriate and not appropriate. For example, let's say you're doing med rec on a patient transferring to a hospital. I mean, not hospital, a uh, OR. Yeah, okay. You're not gonna give them a lisinopril in the OR. You know, so you do med rec, like, okay, this one's not appropriate for the OR, but after he gets out of surgery, then we're going to restart it. Restart it, yeah. Reconciling the meds. So it helps with that transitioning process. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah. It's joint commission, too. It's a good thing. (laughs) JNC. (laughs) JNC. But but the thing is, like, there was a a technician there that was um, in the ED doing med rec. So patients coming into the ED, and Mm -hmm. she was doing med rec. Uh, My goodness, I can't believe the amount of knowledge she had from retail like people coming from ed are pretty much ambulatory wait she was a, a technician i was a technician what so okay. about what i was saying like med rec yeah. some area southeast is kind of i don't know if you guys are like that we let the interns um and even the technicians do med rec Ooh, uh, down southeast. Okay. but um she was amazing and mm-hmm. she worked in retail for a few years and like we're getting questions from like physicians or some of the patients about like what was stocked, what was not stocked, what retails typically stock, yeah. how, what is what makes sense to give the patient. Um, uh, I was just blown away. I was like, everyone went to her. Yeah. And this was the retail experience. You know, that's just one example of why I have so many positive things to say is because they bring, you, you, it's a different skill set. It's not apples and oranges. Retail farms, I mean, not retail, uh, pharmacists with re- resident experience aren't necessarily, necessarily better. Um, it's different yeah different skill set so let me ask you this what is the skill set that you learn in residency then mm. let's flip on the other side uh well i'll say one thing uh not all residencies are created equal it really depends mm-hmm. um you learn a lot of different things uh, one of the things i really liked in my first year of residency was they gave us a uh what do you call it? leadership coach almost <laughs> like a life coach it was yeah. really cool i learned a lot about myself but like yeah they uh, my first year residency really tried to develop the leadership skills in us. So they mm. would like coach us, like make us come to an answer. They're like, Brian, what what kind of, uh, what would they ask me? There was like four things. Like there's four things. Tell me which two of them are you. And they, I think the thing was like big, big ideas, big, um, big ideas, ask a lot of questions, don't ask a lot of questions, getting things done. Mm. and so like he, he did a lot of things to like coach us into thinking more big picture yeah so i learned a lot of that um then obviously for like residencies you learn a lot of clinical skills mm-hmm. so i really uh and 
learned how to refine my clinical skills and really getting into the weeds. Um, mine was a community hospital, so it was perfect because mm. we managed to the detail of how to take care of a patient that had like a DVT, mm -hmm. like really managing heparin nomograms, like how to titrate it, mm -hmm. when to titrate it, when to order labs, like yeah. we were in charge of it. So I was amazing experience. So clinical skills. Yeah, I definitely skills. like, let me uh, speak on this. I definitely think the clinical skills that you get from it is actually really, uh, it's really a strong suit for you guys. You know, like honestly, when I talk to, to some of these residents and stuff i'm like damn they know so much damn <laughs> like what's what's a dv no i know what dvt is but you know like certain things like you're like oh fuck i forgot about heparin like because we never see it it's yeah. not in the but, but that's what patient. i'm saying different skill set yeah but what we don't what we know uh what you guys know we don't know yeah like where the milk is in the, where the milk store. <laughs> <laughs> yo oh that, my god that that's important stuff to know that. <laughs> well, it's, it's patience, man. You, I think that's the number one thing that I learned in pharmacy, too, is, like, having a lot of patience for people, like, taking the time to really understand someone's pain. Whether it's your – a lot. so a lot of people look at, like, their, their, their patients, that's the only person they're serving. But also in retail or any sort of corporation, you know who your other customer is? Hmm? Your supervisor, man. People don't – treat them with the same sort of mindset toward it you know mm -hmm. and i think and like every actually every single person that you deal with in the pharmacy is almost like your patient you know because if your tech if there's something bothering your technician that they're not voicing or anything like that mm, it like you need to address that concern if you want to have an efficient running team I mean, see, this, this is where I think all the, the, the leadership and management skills come from because yeah. you guys balance, like like you're saying, supervisors, your techs, yeah. your your patients. Yeah. We we don't... I'm just being generalizing again. I feel as though a lot of hospital pharmacists... <laughs> <laughs> but I feel as though we don't get as much of a big picture. Yeah. You guys have a bigger picture. You really have to look at that. You know, we, we are concerned about that patient, that acute patient that is needing treatment right now. So we're, yeah. we're a little snippet. Um, yeah, I think, and that's an important thing that I really want to emphasize too. It's not like one is good or bad. It's just like we all have different roles to play on the team. Mm -hmm. Oh, know? that's that's a better way of saying it. Yeah. We we truly are like a multidisciplinary team, and yeah. even within pharmacists. Yeah, so. yeah, that's that's very true. Um, yeah, so I think some main points I'm definitely hitting on is like try to see the benefit of of a situation like let's say you're in retail try to look at the benefits sometimes when you're in the heat of the moment it's hard to lose sight you know like even for me sometimes i lose sight of of that vision you know like my role in the community uh, dude i get asked where the milk is like <laughs> 10 times a day i'm like fuck and we have these russian patients they're like where where, where? 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 show me <laughs> show me help me it's not you know it's pretty funny it's never help me with like one hand it's always help me please <laughs> Please help me, <laughs> dude, man. Those see, I can relate. I worked the drive-through at Walgreens for like <laughs> months, dude. And no joke, yeah. always let me get some milk with that. Yeah, you know, they will always ask me to bring. It, but we couldn't fill. Uh, it had to be a small little bit of milk because you, <laughs> you just pour it. In the <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like sometimes, like I can definitely relate to retail pharmacists that, like, when you get asked that like twenty times a day. I have those moments where I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Like, seriously, we go through so much schooling and all this sort of stuff. And it's just like, man, like, this is my career. This is what I deal with all the time. But it comes with the territory. I mean, that's why people wonder why we get paid so much. Because it's a high turnover rate. Mm -hmm. People get burnt out. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. I see colleagues 10, 20 years. They're tapped out, dude. You yeah. know? Most of my colleagues actually has transitioned into other industries outside mm. of retail and community. Yeah. Um, but what was I? What was I gonna say? Uh, let, let me ask you this really quick. Um, informatics is it? Is it? Is it relatively like how old is the in, like informatics now? Mm. 
uh you can talk a long time about it like where how it started and everything but like uh, rough time estimate so you're talking about like informatics as a whole or like as pharmacy a, informatics a, uh pharmacy informatics pharmacy informatics pharmacy informatics is probably one of the oldest types of informatics i mm. mean it and it depends on your definition of informatics mm -hmm. um so the reason why i asked this is because uh I, I I think I asked you one, this question on a previous interview, but what do people look like? Like, what do your fellow colleagues look like twenty years into your profession or ten years into your profession? Hmm? So you're talking like, about like our career path or career transition? Like, I I guess like uh career satisfaction type of thing. Oh, um, many of the farms, uh, pharmacists I know, like some of the older ones that's been in the field for a while, mm -hmm. they love it. Yeah, I mean it's. You truly can impact a lot with uh, what we're doing in the field, but mm. super happy, uh, very happy. I don't know anyone oh, that's like grumpy. How happy this yeah. this guy is. <laughs> One new <laughs> might not be the same later, but no, I, I think most of the pharmacists I worked with are are pretty happy. The, the I think the there there comes frustrations at times um, mm -hmm. with our field because there are certain things we just can't do. Like what what sort of obstacles do you run into? Uh, so for example, like, um, a very high level example is like, let's say someone wants to, um, not have a help text associated with this medication every time it's ordered, or let's say every single time someone orders, um, medication A, it should always be ordered with med medication B. There should be no scenarios in which medication B is ordered by itself or medication A. Mm. So those those are things we can do in the system to like mm. make things like that, but sometimes we can't, and so the frustration comes when like we are we are charged with building tools that allow um, physicians, pharmacists, nurses, whoever to do their job, you know, easily. But sometimes the technical tools doesn't allow us to do it. So like mm. what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is. Um, we're limited by the confines of the tool itself. So in our case, we used to use Epic, for example, we're, we're going to Epic, right? So sometimes a homegrown system, like, like, uh, they built themselves, like they actually have programmers, like customize it. Oh, you can do so many things because you're customizing it yourself. Yeah. But when you go to like a commercial vendor, like Epic or Cerner or Allscripts, mm -hmm. you are limited by what that product can do. Mm. We can't program into it. Some, some can, but, uh, for the most part, think of it as... It's hard to customize into like a custom suit yeah, type of thing. Yeah, super custom. Like some of the homegrown ones are so custom. And there are so many things we can't do because of that. Mm. Uh, if I went and learned like cache coding and all this stuff, yeah, maybe I can. But it it's very limited to the confines of the tool, which is very frustrating because we want to take care of the patients indirectly by taking care of our physicians, our providers, so they can do good patient care. So let me ask you this. So what's the benefit of switching to a system like Epic rather than using a home homebrew? Because the way I'm looking at it is like, hey, I want this custom suit. You know, it fits me very well. It does everything. Like, why would I ever consider converting to like a system like Epic or something? Hmm. These are... These are questions I usually get in interviews, man. <laughs> Yo, tell me. Tell me. Those are like, these are like interview the questions right of... here. Epic. Otherwise, you're not getting this job. <laughs> um, you know, I it's hard for me to speak on some things sometimes because uh, there's no like I like to say things that are backed up by uh, more literature. Stuff. Yeah, but at a very high level, uh, that used to be the gold standard in informatics, mm -hmm. where they call it the the terminology they use is best of breed. Mm -hmm. So what that means is like you get like the person that can do the best um, CPOE system, the best. Mm. Um, dispensing system like Pixis or Omnicell or and then the best uh uh what was it narcotic monitoring system like you get so best of breed you get the best one whoever can program the best one buy it and combine it and merge it all together through interfaces and things like that mm -hmm. that was the gold standard so that was like your custom solution so you have someone develop say like, okay i need uh let's see tool x or tool y mm -hmm. so i know that this company does do that and they can customize so i go to that company and i'll buy their product and integrate it with the system. Yeah. That was the thought. The problem is we are in that, that, and this is, I think, more of my opinion because uh, I can't remember as much about the research on it, but 
uh, the problem with that is it doesn't lend well for like interoperability. Let me ask you this. What's the gold standard right now? I guess that, I don't know if I would even say it's a gold standard. I think yeah. people still have um, their pros and cons about it. Yeah. And some people might still agree on best of breed. Uh, the thing about going to these systems, so there's a pro and con to like the confines of the tool what I was talking about. At first, okay. right? There's only certain things you can do. But what that also does, the, the pro of that is that you can't break things. Mm-hmm. If someone wants to do like, uh, let's say some physician wanted this thing that they very customized to what they alone wanted, and some programmer tries to go in and program this special thing just for that physician, it can break easily. Updates, mm. uh, maybe that physician leaves the facility, yeah. maybe someone accidentally uh, accesses his stuff. Like, it's very easy to break. That's the problem with customized solutions, is like it can get so customized, maintenance, like to support it. Uh, becomes unmaintainable. Mm. Uh, things like updates. Yeah. You always have to update systems that can break things. Uh-huh. And so I think the new gold standard is like commercialized vendors because you can't break it as easily. Yeah. Um, and it's easier to, it's like a standard. So it's easy to transfer information all over the place mm-hmm. uh, versus like customized solutions. I don't know mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. It, but, it, it definitely makes sense. It's, so it's kind of like, it's uh basically easier to update. Um, you won't run into so many technical problems. You know, uh, it's more streamlined. That's what I'm getting from what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, there's like tons and tons of papers on this, so it's like a huge, huge topic. I'm probably not doing it justice. <laughs> but <laughs> but here's here's something else. Like, yeah. actions speak louder than words, right? Uh-huh. And I am I have to say that I, this is my own opinion. There's no one else's opinion, but there are very key uh very famous hospitals that are going away from like customized solutions that they program over the last 20 40 50 years mm. into these commercial things vanderbilt one of the most premier known and famous homegrown systems out there mm. is going to um epic what? this november it's awesome. crazy uh mayo clinic is obviously going towards uh, Epic as well. Oh, and who's who's in charge of that? <laughs> <by the way? laughs> who's in charge of that? <laughs> yeah, but, but but you know you know, but it's cool because yeah. Mayo has been uh, like that too. So they're going to a commercial one that was announced like in 2015. Uh, Brigham's and Women's, which you probably oh know. Brigham's ba- and Women's, Boston baby. Yeah, yo, they they have one of the most refined, customized solutions out there, and it's been around for decades. Mm. They're going to Epic. Hmm. It's crazy. And there's a Whoa. lot of hospitals doing that. And that's why I'm telling you, like, best of breed and then all these commercial vendors. That, that's just, again, my, my observation. Mm, that's awesome. So today we talked a lot about Epic Informatics. <laughs> we talked about my shitty pickup artist skills. Uh, you didn't even need them. <laughs> yeah, I didn't need them. Um, we talked about meeting people in California. Um Guys, if you like this sort of podcast style type of video, let me know in the comments. Um, I just thought it'd be just really cool to just do a long form type of type of thing, you know, uh, mm-hmm. with Brian. And so we could just shoot the shit, talk, whatever, like pops up in our head. But anyways, guys, if you like my video, like, subscribe, comment, make sure to follow Brian right over here. I, I do the screen turn Did off. You just I don't touch even my know. nipple. What? Did you touch my nipple. I didn't do shit. You, you I didn't do anything. <laughs> it's not video. <laughs> um do you like it um Um, but yeah make sure to follow brian and we'll see you guys next time and make sure if you guys are interested in informatics hit up brian man yeah man hit me up hit me up peace guys (laughs) no i just realized I never pressed record on that camera.